Kashuo Ishiguru vs. Haruki Mirakami. You are now tuned in to Author Wars, where we see who the superior author is. So, I am your host, Ian Kadnak, and today we are witnessing a fight between two heavyweights with big jabs and big overhand rights. Two Japanese authors, one being Kashuo Ishiguru, the Nobel Prize literature winner a couple years back, a Japanese-British author whose use of the unreliable narrator is absolutely insane. And on the other side, we have Haruki Mirakami, a Japanese author who brought magic, weird sex scenes, and a sense of Hemingwaying, Hemingwaying and minimalism back to liter literary fiction. So here's how Author Wars work. We are going to have a couple different rounds. Each author is going to receive points during these rounds and whoever has the most points at the end is going to win. So let me know down below, first of all, who you think the superior author is and then maybe at the end you'll have your opinion changed. So let's start off with the book by book showdown. So the first books we're going to do are the early books, two early books from both authors. And for Mirakami, we're going to have a wild sheep chase and a hard boiled wonderland and the end of the world. And for Ishiguru, we're going to do a pale view of the hills and an artist of the floating world. So which set of early novels is superior? So I have to pick a winner, but I think it's split. So I think that a pale view of the hills is not as good as a wild sheep chase. But I do think that an artist of the floating world is better than hard-boiled uh, hard wonderland or the end of the world, excuse me, and the end of the world. I think that that is one of my favorite Mirakami novels. So Mirakami might not fare very well during this battle, but I really do think that an artist of the floating world captures this weird, unreliable um, mysticism with the narrators. It's very dark. It's about a painter. If you guys, I won't spoil too much. It's about a painter who is, who, commissioned and was the head of Japanese propaganda paintings. But now after the uh, post-World War II, he's now looked down upon. He's not very, he used to be famous, but now he is looked down upon. All his old students are, it's very weird. It's a very weird perspective, but it's a very good novel. And I think it is much better. It's not that much better written, but it just is executed a little bit better than a hard boiled wonder, hard boiled wonderland and the end of the world. So we are going to give a point to Kashuo Ishiguru. Our next showdown is between both authors iconic book and that is for Mirakami Norwegian Wood and for Kashuo Ishiguru The Remains of the Day which is about a British butler another unreliable narrator and this is a hard one because I really enjoy both novels but I'm going to have to give this one to Kashuo Ishiguru again because The Remains of the Day is one of the best examples of an unreliable narrator of all time it is so deep it is so good the care it is so frustrating among many other things and Norwegian Wood is a great love story it's one of Mirakami's once again best books but I think Think that Ishiguru is much more ambitious and shines much more in his books. So we are going to give another point to Kashuo Ishiguru. Now looking good. Rough start for Mirakami. Next, we're going to talk about two, uh, the author's lesser known works. Around the same time, they have, um, so Mirakami has Dance, Dance, Dance and South of the Border, West of the Sun. Have you read those? Those are two of his le uh, least known works. And then for Kashu Ishiguru, The Unconsoled, which is one of the most wonky books I've ever read. Let me know down below if you've read uh, The Unconsoled, what you thought. I need to do a review on that. I remember I was reading that. It was so bizarre and I just wanted to finish it really bad. And so I just remember staying up to like six in the morning just to get it done. I was just, I remember I was living with some roommates and it was loud. So I just went into the bathroom and just turned on the fan and just sat there and read and finished it for a couple of hours. It was kind of weird, but I have a pretty solid opinion on this because I really think that I, I feel that Dance, Dance, Dance by Haruki Mirakami is one of his best novels for sure in the top three. And it may be my number one by him in terms of just the magic, the aesthetic, the nostalgia of um, once you've read the whole rat series and the un and south of the border west of the sun is also pretty good but the unconsoled by kashu ishiguru i feel like is his worst ah it's it, one of his worst books it is very ambitious it's very cool but it falls flat in so many different places and i don't even understand how there was an editor at times and him sending that through and a proofreader there was so many different things that i i pride myself on reading hard books and following hard books to a pretty good degree. And I followed it pretty good, but it was making me work without very much reward. It was always just like, huh, huh. So we are going to give a point to Haruki Mirakami for the best, you know, under uh, lesser known novels. Next, we have an interesting category, and that is the book that you will get recommended. If if someone tells you to read a Kaosho Ishiguru novel seven or eight times a ten, eight, seven or eight times out of ten, it will be Never Let Me Go. And if you read, if someone tells you to read a Mirakami book seven or eight times out of ten, it will be Wind Up the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. 
and I have a huge soft spot in the uh, for these books right now I'm actually having my partner read never let me go right now and she's loving it she also completed wind up Th those were the books actually if, if, if I'm one of those people those are the books that I gave to her first from those authors and I, I'm torn on this one because I really enjoy Never Let Me Go, but I think the Wind Up Bird Chronicle is very ambitious, very well done, and very well executed. At, and Never Let Me Go has a, a, a tad, a tad of pretend, atheistic pretentiousness that Ishiguro sometimes has, and that's not to my liking, and I don't think that's to the, that, that contracts a little bit too much and takes, so what do I mean by that? Let's dive into that. That never let me go. If you go listen, there's a great interview by with Kasho Ishiguru on the radio show. Just type in Bookworm, uh, KCRW, Kasho Ishiguru. It's like a 25 minute interview. It's really good. But he basically, summer to summarize it, talks about how the novel was basically an extension of his atheism. That he just wanted to show us the irrationality of most of our beliefs of love. Like for instance, we think that love, the, our love, will we'll all be in heaven one day and with our families. And that that and not to spoil, there's similar ideas in Never Let me go and um you know the people never let me go have the short have short lives so it's like morality uh the thoughts of mortality and uh, in certain morals are just blown up and are a lot faster because they are living these short lives but they're also very well educated they live a very nice life and you know a lot of times when people have short lives in history they are also living a very illiterate and oppressed existence so that it kind of but it kind of has this overtone and it's kind of just condensing and it kind of feels like that but as the one that combined bird chronicle kind of expands feels very expansive and innovative so mirakami has caught it up and he has oops he has gotten a, another point so it is now two to two in the author battle let's go do you guys enjoy this do you guys want to see more of these i'm planning to literally just keep doing this with all my favorite authors and just pit mirakami and ishiguru again and again just against everybody but you know i'm going to start off with a bunch of different authors first because there's so much parody it's like kashu ishiguru versus david foster wallace like who knows how that one's going to go like there's so many different things and angles to analyze between these two authors and i feel like actually the more i do it then the more i'll understand about these authors and some of their nuances and the battles will just get better and better but Let's talk about our next category. And our next category is everything else. All the other books that haven't been mentioned yet because some are prolific, some are big, but there's only a couple left. So let's talk about each author's um, text. So we haven't discussed When We Were Orphans, The Buried Giant, and Clara and the Sun for Kasho Ishiguru. And for Haru Haruki Mirakami, we have Kafka on the Shore, Sputnik Sweetheart, After Dark, IQ84, Colorist, Shizukuru, and Killing Kamenadot Tori. And I know this is a lot, right? This is a, uh, Mirakami has a lot more novels here, but I think the answer is pretty clear that if you're an Ishiguru fan, it's, it's kind of hard because Claire in the Sun was great. It was an eight or nine out of 10. I really enjoyed that novel, but The Buried Giant was more a six or seven out of 10. But if we look at Mirakami, I think Kafka on the Shore is my favorite book by him. IQ84 is also in my top two or three, top 25 books maybe of all time. So I think that Mirakami in terms of what he's written, but I, I, I'm i feeling killing uh, Kamandatori, I don't even know how to say that, and colorist Tezukuru Tezaki in his years of pilgrimage fell a little bit flat. Those are maybe more fives out of sixes, but in his sweethearts, maybe a six or a seven. So, you know, after darks, maybe five or six. So I'm mean, they're about the same, but I'm going to give the point to Mirakami because I feel like Claire in the Sun was very well written, but Mirakami has kept a more consistent schedule too. If we're looking at it right here, it took 10 years for Kasho Ishiguru to write The Buried Giant. It took him another seven or six years to write Clara and the Sun. As Mirakami has a lot smaller gaps between and he's writing just as good of books. And so there's just more there. So there's just kind of these extra books that really maybe aren't as prolific or as mind blowing or crazy. The last books maybe on the list that you would get from someone, not the early works, I guess they're the later works. So we're going to give that uh, point to Mirakami again. Wow, we have a comeback story. Who would have thought moving into the next round that we had a comeback story? And we actually have another category here because both authors have done short story collections. So Ichiguru has one called Nocturnes and then Mirakami has multiple uh, short story collections. And I feel like this one's very easy. Mirakami is the superior, in my opinion, short story author just because he does it more, just because he's released more, he's into it. He spends a lot of his time doing it. And just the breadth and depth of his short stories, I feel like is just sometimes this quantity can be out quality even though i feel like they're just as good that look he's just done it more there's just more out there and we have to have a showdown i know you know just feel a lot deeper about haruki mirakami short stories ishiguru if ishiguru's book nocturnes is once again a six or seven out of ten and 
I, I don't know if Hiroki Murakami has any 10 out of 10 short story collections, but what else am I supposed to judge this on? That Hiroki Murakami is just more busy as an author and is more experimental too. And that, that counts for something. So let's hop into the next round, which is analyzing the author's styles and certain points one by one. So let's just talk about prose. And I know this is going to be hard and it's just gonna to have to go to Ishiguru because there might be a problem with the translations, right? That Maria Kami is being translated. I'm reading it in English. She's writing in Japanese. But I feel like even if I was reading in Japanese, it isn't as beautiful of style and prose as Ishiguru is writing. Ishiguru, I feel like is a writing and style master. One of the best. So we Ishiguru wins that one pretty easily. But that once again, maybe a translation thing. But from what I've heard, because I'm a Mirakami fanboy, I have a friend who has lived in Japan now for about 10 years, was fluent in it before he moved there, parents lived there, from there. And he, he told me that, I asked him this, he was like, it's better, but it's not like significantly better. And if I'm sure if I asked him, he would say Ishiguru in terms of style. So let's talk about exper being experimental though. And this is, a, this is a hard one because I don't know where to throw in the category of uh, Ishiguru's unreliable narrators. And I actually don't think it's going to be here. So just in terms of experimental novels and stories, I feel like it has to go to Mirakami. All of it, I mean, think of I, if you've read IQ84, Kafka on the Shore, his, even his last book, the Killing Commandatory book. He is a very experimental author. And if we, and, and uh, excuse me, Ishiguru's one uh, attempt at that was the Unconsoled, That Fell Flat, Claire in the Sun, The Very Giant. Some of those are a little bit experimental, but they're not really that innovative. They are innovative in terms of the unreliable narrator, but that's not, the, that's not that new of a technique. That's not too insane. It's insane in terms of the characterization and other things, but not that. So Mirakami wins that category. So next we'll have characters. We'll just talk about characterization and characters. And I feel like Ishiguru wins every single day of the week with this. His unreliable character uh, narrator aspect is insane. That automatically wins him this. But just the general likability and depth of the characters. Mirakami has this thing where most characters are just kind of weird, empty, not all the time. They're kind of like they like sex scenes are just like, oh, I came and I came and then I left. Um, you know, it's kind of like that most of the time where it's really weird and sexual stuff. So like the characterization and the depth and on that level isn't very good. So Ishiguru is going to win that. We have a close battle going on here and I don't, I just have the categories written down. I don't know who's going to win this. So I'm like kind of surprised here. I, at the start, I was like, as we were going on, I was like, oh man, Ishiguru is probably going to pull away. So let's hop into the next writing category which is setting and ex execution of the period, right? So if a novel's taking place in the 60s, how's the setting and also how's the execution of the period? Because both authors don't really actually rely on setting very much. They're actually not very setting heavy, setting heavy authors. You know, they're not a Cormac McCarthy building the crazy settings or um, a Leslie Marmon Silco in Ceremony and making the setting a character and going all experimental crazy. But in terms of the period, both have novels ranging. Mirakami mostly has novels from the 60s onward. Most Ishiguru's novels are from the 40s and onward, but the setting has to go to Ishiguru for this one and the period because, for instance, um, A Pale View of the Hills, An Artist of the Floating World, even The Buried Giant. They, um, But the first two I talked about, the post-World War II and post-World War II Japan are executed very well and actually gave me the perspective. I really... I don't know what Japan was like back then, but I know a lot more than I did before about what Japan was like post-World War II. And if you look at a novel like even When We Were Orphans, which took place um, in Southeast Asia somewhere, it's blanking in my mind right now, he did a decent job of building the setting. So, and I feel like that's a big part of how well you can do the period, how well you can do settings as an author in terms of your whole bibliography. So now we are tied up again, everybody. Oh my gosh, we are now tied. Next we have authenticity and voice. How much voice comes through in the voices. And this one is once again hard because Ichiguru is a very, at times, flat author. And that's because he's doing these unreliable narrators. But Mirakami lets more go. And because, like, he brings in all the music stuff. You read Mirakami, there's all this music stuff and jazz and cats and all these really individual things that are really dear and near to Mirakami. But Ishiguru does that with his characters, but they're all individual. There's no, there's no sameness there because they all have their own quirks. So that's a tie. I'm really just going to give them a tie. And we're now moving on to our next category, which luckily has three different 
points that, that can be given. I made sure it was odd just in case something like this happened because we're at a tie right now. And, ne and next is the impact, the impact on the world. As an author, I know we don't like to think about this, but what has been the actual impact? You put something out there, you spend all this time. How has it changed people? How has it transformed people? And I think this one is close. And even though Ishiguro won the Nobel Peace Prize, not Peace Prize, excuse me, Nobel Prize of li in literature, I really think that Mirakami has changed more lives and brought people to more of a magical and relaxed existence through literature and more fun and created a lot of joy when people read it. When I'm sitting down and I'm reading Never Let Me Go in these things, even though they maybe may make me question certain aspects of reality, my own unreliability, Mirakami gives me more joy, gives me more spark. And I feel that anyone, anyone I know, I, I talked to a couple of people who like both authors and I asked them all uh, most of these questions and they gave the point to Mirakami and I am going to also. Boom, six to five, everybody. Next is a bit of an odd one, but it's an author war with two living authors. And it's going to be different with dead authors, but we can do this one is with their future, my actual thoughts on their potential future as an author. And Mirakami is 73 and a Capricorn, surprisingly. And Ishiguru is 67 and a Libra. That's kind of cool. Both um, very interesting signs for me. Anyway, and I would say, though, looking at Mirakami's last two books and then looking at Ishiguru's last two books that I think that Ishiguru is going to produce over the next, you know, like they're only six years apart. If both write two more books, let's say two or three more books, which they probably will. I'm betting that Ishiguru is going to come up on top. And I know that's speculative, but just what he's been doing recently and his mentality, I think Ishiguru will come out on top. So we are going to give a the point to Ishiguru before we get to our last category. I didn't expect this to be a tie, but this is the first one. So we have to go crazy. Here we go. Six to six, last category time. Boom. And I know this may suck, but the last category is if just for the tiebreaker aspect, my personal opinion, who I think, you know, I've tried to keep this as objective as possible throughout this. You know, maybe there's been some bias, but, you know, I've read both authors' works twice, I think, all the way through, and except The Unconsoled. But I, here I am, going to make my pick. Here I go. And I think overall, someone who, the person that has really risen above for me and who I think will have, you know, changed me and how I think and how I feel at a very deep level is... Haruki Murakami, our winner, everybody, our winner by split decision in the fifth round of the fight, Haruki Murakami. There it is, everybody. Haruki Murakami wins seven to six in our battle. Let me know what you guys think and check out some more videos on Author Wars right here when they come out very soon. Peace.